Hey, Les. Great workshop you got here. Thanks. So what are you working on? This is one of my naughty northerners, Vern. <laughs> Do I ask? Well, the term naughty just simply means that it's a knot that I've found in the bush uh, in an old pine forest where you look for deadfalls. Kicked them out of the old tree and uh, that's been laying for, uh, for years and years. And then uh, just clean them off and uh, start pulling out some of the features and eventually you'll get uh, an individual looking face there. Ah. This is one that I've uh, completed. It gives you an idea of the uh, how they'll turn out. Beautiful, They're beautiful work. Yeah, ever nice. But I know you came here probably to look at uh, the process in carving a loon, so let's uh, go and look at that. Sounds like a great idea. To begin, Vern, we would need uh, to have as much reference material as we can find. Uh, good books, uh, good photographs, best to use photographs for detail. Um, you want to uh, have a nice pattern, as much detail as you can get. Uh, good tools, a good uh, bench knife, a uh, couple of good gouges for your roughing out, especially a pencil and a ruler, maybe a pair of calipers, and of course a good block of wood, basswood, pine, uh, and then we go to the bandsaw and the next step. After you have your bandsaw cut out, Vern, a ruler, a pencil, get some center lines on just to keep you balanced, and then you want to draw on a few lines just to knock off some of the waste wood. Uh, with, to do that, we're going to need um, a good size mallet and a, and a good size gouge. And then just knock off the big corners. You can kind of determine the inner uh, circle of the body. And then just get rid of some of this waste wood. And then we'll go on to a few other gouges. Now it's a good idea to have a, a good V-tool, a large V-tool or a round gouge. And just outline some of the main features. I've got them lightly penciled on here which you basically have to do to get started. This will give you an idea where to go and if you look at your pattern you'll get all the spots where you want to get a little bit of an outline. Okay, it's a good idea to use a deep brown gouge to do some of the smoothing cuts if you want to uh, get in and just have an outline but not too sharp a bottom. Get some of these areas smoothed out. Better to turn and work with the grain. And then uh, go back with your uh, V-tool again and do some of the uh, sharp outlining, like the, the wings. You don't want to do too much undercutting. Just get the basic shape first. Get rid of some of the excess wood. And then we, you'll have it pretty well uh, roughed out, a little bit more work like that. And then uh, we can take the um, head, do a little work with the bench knife and uh, sort of just get a basic shape knock off the big corners as much as you feel like you want to do by hand and then we would sort of temporarily attach it to the head to the body rather and then we would move on and I can show you how to do some power carving. All right we'll take a power shaper and just get things smoothed out so we can get a little bit more detail. This side has been uh, done so this is the side we were working on. Well, that was a little dusty, so it's always nice to get back to the hand tools. But first the pencil, and we'll put on a few of the details that we want to carve with the smaller tools. First, we're going to get a little bit of bill work done here. Also, we're going to go back and put some back feathers on, so we'll just give an outline of a pattern. Of course, we're referring to our pattern all the time when we do this. And we'll put a bit more detail on there. And then we'll go and we'll um, add our wing tips. This is always a little tricky to get them on the way you want them. That would be the first one and then the second one and so on. So uh, if you have a little bit of an idea before you start, it helps. Getting the wingtips in is, uh, is pretty important that you get them more or less right. So let's get them drawn in 
pretty well the way you want to end up carving them. Okay, if you want to rough in the chick at this time, that's a good idea too. So um, then we'll go back to the hand tools. Um, to outline the wings, basically we, we want to just get the bottom outline of the second feather, the first one being on the bottom, and then we just keep on stepping up and get those other ones just outlined rather roughly, but nice and straight. And then we just round them off, step them down, just so there's a little layering effect. And then the last one. Then you'll see you have all the waste wood to remove out. I'll do the same thing on the back feathers, only I'll use maybe the smooth bottom gouge, just so it doesn't leave such a sharp edge. And we'll outline those rows of feathers, initially just roughly like that. And we continue with that and then actually get a little individual feather shape on each of these feathers. So you can just do something like this. Okay, there's a variety of cutters that you can use, uh, Vern, but uh, what we'll use first is a little uh, ruby carver, a fairly large ruby carver with coarse, uh, coarse teeth on it. And I'm using a little uh, power carver here. And we're gonna just do a little shaping. knocking off the hard corners. Obviously, Vern, it takes a lot of sanding and shaping to get it down to the final stage. We go through a lot of things like uh, little ruby cutters and diamond bits and stones and so on, uh, and, a, and a lot of fine sanding. Uh, to get it to the painting stage. Wow, Les, that's absolutely incredible. It looks lifelike. How did you finish it? Well, first we just, after the sanding, we put uh, a couple of coats of uh, lacquer sealer, and then I used the Joe Sonia Artist acrylics. Uh, add a little bit of iridescence here and there to give it a nice sheen. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm sure the viewers have walked away with something that they'll be able to use in their next carving. I hope that we can join you again on another project in the future, Les. Thanks for having us in. My pleasure, Vern.